The Nigerian Correctional Service has disclosed that thousands of inmates in prisons across the country are without trial. Assistant Controller General Gimba Dumbulwa made the revelation on Wednesday in Abuja at a conference on decongestion and corrections administration. The official noted that as of May 9, 75,436 inmates are in correctional centers, while 52,446 are awaiting trial inmates. The ACG also said over 70% of them have overstayed in custody due to the lateness in sentencing and keeping them for more than normal time. He also added that the efforts of the Controller General Haliru Nababa to get the prisons decongested was, hind was hindered by delays in prosecution. The Nigerian Correctional Service uh, only option right now, according to him, is to transfer inmates from overcrowded custodial facilities to others with available space. Well, joining us to discuss this is uh, Emmanuel Omoran, he's a legal practitioner, and Ngozi Nyosiobi obi Abafo. She is the founder of Custodial Reformation Foundation. Thank you so much, gentlemen and lady, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Thank you, Mary. Great. Let me start with you, Barry Saimano. What exactly do you think, um, you know, are the main reasons, aside from the fact that we have established that these people, some of these prisoners um, have had a longer time in prison because um, they've not been able to get a court date? Um, what exactly do you think is responsible for the delay in the wills of justice and for these men to get their day in court? Well, um, the first thing I say here is that uh, we need to be honest with ourselves in Nigeria. Uh, people who find themselves working for government do not want to do what they are paid to do. And um, Nigerians seem to like punishing them. I'll tell you one story about uh, 20 years ago, I was in Uyo, and um, a man was brought to court for a waiting trial matter. Uh, the, uh, the man was um, arrested on the road, and he was charged to court the next day. He was walking on the road with his radio, and um, he was asked for the receipt. He didn't have his receipt. Those days, it was usual to see people walking on the road with radio in, in, in the state there. And uh, the man was detained and taken to charge to court the next morning. The next day, there was nobody to bail him. He was granted bail, nobody to bail him, because his family didn't know, know where he was. Wow. He was taken into prison custody. And when I saw him, he had spent about 10 years in incarceration. And that day was a very bad day because I was so mad. I was much younger then. And um, I confronted the magistrate. And the magistrate said, well, nobody has come. I said, what do you mean nobody has come? This man is a Nigerian. The man had scabies all over his body. And um, because, you know, if you are an awaiting trial person in, in prison custody, you are not in the custody of the prison. You are supposed to be. You are not. You, you are supposed to be in the custody of the police, but the police does not have facility for you once you have been charged to court. So you are kept in the prison custody, but the prison does not count you as one of those people who have been sentenced. Mm. So they, and they do not care for you. Wow. So invariably, if you don't have family members, or your family members don't know where you are, you have you have money to soak to bath. You may not have space. You will be pushed to corners unless. You are well to do. You can pay for space. You can get people to help you inside. It's it's quite tough there. So the unfortunately, these things are things that can be determined by legislation and the executive branch doing what it ought to do by separating people who have been convicted. Mm -hmm. or allowing people who have been granted bail previously, the, asking the court to allow those who have been granted bail previously and have come to court to be prosecuted, to be allowed to go back on that administrative bail. Instead of you placing stiffer conditions, when you have not tried the person, if a man was arrested 
and is able to come back to court. And the court and is charged to court. Why give other conditions? Why not keep it on on the previous administrative bill? If that's the part of the problem of the courts. Mm -hmm. A lot of judges are now accept taking this method. But most judges do not see this, especially those ones who came from the magistracy. The, a lot of the magistrates follow the old ways. Oh, what are the conditions? He has to fulfill this, he has to fulfill that. What is wrong with a person who willingly came to court, walked to himself to court, or drove himself to court? We don't give him additional conditions for bail. Why mm. do that? Mm. And if the person cannot meet those conditions, you take him into the prison custody. You see? So, but another thing, again, to be really honest, is that we should ask ourselves how many prisons have been built since 1979? Mm. How many prisons have been built in Nigeria? What is the executive doing with all this money budgeted to the Minister of Internal Affairs for prison uh, uh, Reforms. care of the prisoners? Mm. If you are, we have had a population explosion which has taken us over on, uh, one, almost 300%, of our previous population in 1970, how come we are still keeping those prisons that we had in 1970 and we are not built? How many have we built? In the whole of Aquabom and Cross River that I know of, there's only one new prison that was built by uh, then Governor Gosri Lakpabi, Nika Repenet, because they broke the prison wall, I mean the old prison, and had to op op uh, break it up to make new roads. They had to go and build a bigger prison, which is the better prison where everybody in Akwaibo, every big man in Akwaibo now wants to go to. <laughs> let's ask, be honest, let's look at the statistics. How many prisons have been built with this kind of explosion of population and the fact that crime rate has increased tremendously okay. after the Civil War? Okay, I will come back to you. Let me go to um, Ngozi. Ngozi, it's interesting because I've spoken to you about what you're doing and the Custodial Reform Foundation. And you've told me about also something similar to what uh, Barista Morin is talking about, um, a person that was, you know, taken um, for some petty crime, but then ended up spending more time in prison. But uh, he's talking about alternatives and better ways that we can, um, people can get justice or some, gain their, regain their freedom. Um, I know that the laws in the United States allows you, you're entitled to a call, one call, uh, to either a friend or a family, so you can actually have somebody come bail you. Is that also part of our constitutional rights here in Nigeria? And if that is it, um, how many people have access to those calls? And do we even have phones in those prisons where you can call? Ngozi, you need to unmute yourself because we can't hear you. Ngozi, are you there? Can you hear us? We can't hear you. You need to unmute yourself so we can hear you. Go ahead. I can hear you. Yes, go ahead. We couldn't hear you. Go ahead and answer. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes. So, um, do, they do have the opportunity to make that call, and they have the right to make that call. Uh, just like the barrister said, um, the call, for example, now someone is being picked on along the road. Does the person have the number of his closest relative, for example? The person may not even be with a, with a phone, with his mobile phone, and then ends up being arrested for reasons he doesn't know about. So, yes, they are entitled to that call, but we see situations whereby the person doesn't have the phone of his relatives at, at hand to make that call immediately. So that person is, is now having that situation whereby the charge is drawn up against him and then he's sent to the, to the magistrate's court and then remanded from there. So the issue now is we need to, to avoid these delays. There is need to ensure that this uh, speedy trial is uh, taken very seriously. For example, when you charge, when you, when a, a charge is drafted and the person is taken to the magistrate's court, when the magistrate's court doesn't have the jurisdiction to entertain that matter, the magistrate's court has a duty to transfer the file to the Ministry of Justice, whereby the Ministry of Justice now have to file a charge 
against the accused person at the high court. Now, it is during this period we will say the person is waiting to be tried. So why do we have to wait such long time to have their charge filed at the high court so that the necessary thing would be done? So there is need to close the gap and ensure speedy trial where such instances come up. What about those who, you know, because, you know, the law also prescribes that you can, um, I don't, again, um, in other places, you have, the state can provide you with a lawyer so that you can quickly get your day in court. Um, do we have such people in, in, in Nigeria who would, I mean, the Ministry of Justice is in different states across the Federation and even the federal ministries, do we have lawyers who pro bono will be, you know, uh, there to defend these guys for the state? That, well, we don't do it for the state, but for Social Reform Foundation, that is one of our main our objectives. We do take up cases pro bono for those who are awaiting trial, and we also try as much as possible to ensure that their uh, trial is expedited, because that is very important. If you are charged and within six months you can determine whether someone is innocent or guilty, it's very, it, I think it will be more relieving for the inmate or the person who is charged, at least within six months, you can get documents, you know whether you're innocent or not. Because most of these cases, if after five years, you find out that the person is innocent, you've wasted the person's five years, five years of his life. You mm. waste, you've wasted the person's 17 years. We've seen cases as much as 17 years, only to get the person discharged at the end of the day because there is no evidence, there is no witness to that matter. So why should we why should these people's time be wasted? That is actually one of the reasons why um, Custodial Reform Foundation is addressing at the moment, making sure that we go into the custodial centers, the correctional centers, check out, look out for those who's, uh, who are not going to court and um, pick up their matters. And a lot of all these cases actually need funding. Mm. Because in, sometimes you start by filing their bill, when you file their bill, then they will come up with a charge. When that's when they sometimes become serious to prosecute the matter. Mm -hmm. But when you don't, when you just leave the person and not, you don't call up, you don't call the attention of the minister of justice to it. In most cases, the, the file just lies down there, and the person is just kept in, in custody just for that for that long period. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that any file that goes to the minister of justice is treated within time. Okay. So that. These people don't have to spend so much time waiting to be to be released. Okay. I'm going, I'm going to come yeah. back to you because we have very little time. But, but Baisal Marin, recently the um, Minister uh, of Interior complained about the fact that it costs, um, you know, the, the um, prisons about a, a million plus to um, feed one prisoner yearly. And now they want to move that responsibility to states. I'll give you two minutes to see, to, to see how this is feasible. Remember, you've just also talked about the fact that there are not enough prisons. The capacity is meager. Um, we hardly have big prison facilities across the country. But then the average Nigerian will also say that we also have deficit in so many things. Why should we prioritize prisons? No, can I say uh, two things? Um, on the issue of pro bono, uh, there are a lot of lawyers that are doing that. There is another organization called LACRI that is doing that vigorously. That has a lot of lawyers, over about, uh, about 200 lawyers that are quietly do, uh, assisting uh, in uh, defending uh, uh, Nigerians who are, who are in authority, who are in custody. But you see, like I said earlier, we have major problems. What stops the federal government from allowing people to build private prisons? Why must government do everything? What stops government from allowing people be born uh, chasers? So that if you are granted bail, instead of you somebody you going to look for shorty or do this, do that, somebody you comes send to it to the bail bonds, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I can take this man on bail. And the person, the bail is fixed, the bail bond uh, amount is fixed, the man pays it and make sure you come and if you do not come, the man loses his money. Mm. But you pay, at the end of the day, 
you the man does it as a business. You get there are a lot of such business, and you know, these are opportunities that you can create. If states, if the laws are amended, it's like until we had GSM, until the NITER Act was amended, you could not do any private course in Nigeria. You had to go through NITER. But as soon as the uh, the uh, the act was amended, and you had the uh, uh, you, were, you were able to have GSM, we've had other um, uh, telecommunications. Private sector has moved in uh, uh, vigorously. The, 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 the system of making calls prior to now has changed. Before you, I had. Only one line to make calls, IDD. I must go to you must come to my office. We must, you needed to lock it or somebody will, will break into it. Now everybody look at we are doing making calls now. We are, we are conversing, we are doing, doing television. Yeah. When those days you had only one television on the street. Yeah. So we can do things by uh, us electing people who know what to go and do in the National Assembly okay. or in the State House of Assembly. We okay. cannot hold this thing, our country back like this. Okay. We should allow the uh, consider system to improve, to come up to the standards available globally. Okay. We can have private sectors running uh, prisons, as we're having people running right, uh, schools. Okay. Until recently, private schools were not there. And the only admissionary schools and government schools. Okay. All right. Let me... So we can't do this. We must think out of the box. All right. Um, finally, Ngozi, because we're almost out of time, um, are there efforts by you and the likes of you who are... Um, you know, non-governmental organizations, a group of pro bono lawyers who are trying to reform society. Um, are you pushing for uh, some sort of reforms, especially for the prisons and the legislative system that surrounds incarcerations and speedy delivery of justice? First of all, what we are pushing mainly for is to make sure that the investigate, investigating police officers do the right thing. Because that is where the arrest starts. Mm -hmm. If you're arresting somebody and you're not objective about it, if you're arresting somebody, somebody and you're, or you're being sentimental or you're being induced to keep detaining such person, that person will continue to suffer. So now, every IPO has to do their job objectively. For example, someone writes a petition to a police station and the IPO is asking the person, okay, um, who are you suspecting? You mention a name, and then in Nigeria, most of us are religious, we are spiritual. You may just, the person might be like, oh, are you sure the person just wake up and then um, saw the person in the dream and just said, yes, I'm suspecting this person. Then the police person, the police officer goes, picks the person, and then that's the suspect. Okay, you're arrested. You're arrested, fine. Um, you explain your side of the story and then uh, bail yourself. That's the next thing you're hearing. So bail yourself, bail yourself with, with words and get yourself a short tea. What if the person doesn't have it? The duty is on the IPO to investigate that person, ask serious questions, release the person if there is no evidence against the person. Mm. Instead of asking the person to get you get uh, get paid to get bailed mm. or get uh, a short seat. If the person if there's no evidence against the person, release the person. There's no need to ask the person to get himself a short seat during that point. Okay. I think if the IPOs are objective. In their, in their doings. We will have minimal um, issue of throwing them in there, then waiting on the government to feed them, then telling us they use one million mm. to feed one person. That's 2,700 naira per, uh, per day, or thereabout. Mm. 2,700 naira, and, and you hear reports of them eating beans with stones, and then um, <laughs> 2,700 naira. Look at it, 83,000 83, 83, naira a month. Mm. That is above the minimum wage of a civil servant. Okay. So I think okay. the government should actually look at and right. use that aspect to actually increase the minimum okay. wage. We've, That's okay. it. Your, what you're telling us is that prisoners are eating and enjoying more than the civil servant who is collecting minimum wage. Well, um, there's a lot, uh, from what I hear, you, both the lady and the gentleman saying, there's a lot more attention that needs to be focused uh, in, um, you know, the corrections um, side of life. So I, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing. I want to thank you, Barista Emmanuel, also for the work that you guys are doing. But let's hope that after May 29, we will see um, some sort of attention in that area. Emmanuel Moran is a legal practitioner. So is Ngozi Abafo, who is the founder of Custodial Reform Foundation. Thank you so much, lady and gentlemen. For speaking with us.
Thank you. All right. Well, that's the show tonight. We want to thank you all for participating. And, of course, if you want to catch up on all our previous episodes and conversations on the show, go to Plus TV Africa on YouTube. Uh, subscribe and follow all our programs. I am Mary Anna Kondu. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. <laughs>